Hello, I'm Nancy Coleman, Dean of Continuing Education and University Extension here at Harvard, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first of what I hope will be a series of interviews. One of the things that makes us truly special here at DCE is our students. Their journeys and their stories are truly amazing and inspire me every day. Joining me today in the studio are two individuals that personify that inspiration. I'm thrilled to be joined by Shirley Tate, one of our newest alums who just graduated this year, 2022, with an ALB in religion. Welcome and congratulations, Shirley. Thank you. And also, we're here with Dinesh C., a degree candidate who's currently pers pursuing his ALM and our sustainability program while doing amazing things in his career as well. So welcome to the both of you. We're Thanks. so Thank thrilled you. to have you here. So I'd love to just ask you some questions about your experience here at Harvard Extension School, how you found the program, what you're doing with your education, and really just get some thoughts on how you, you know, how you think about your education here at Harvard. And Shirley, if I could start with you, you've had quite the journey. I know you're originally from Boston and now you have moved to North Carolina. Can you tell us about some of the steps that have really been taken along that journey? Um, in November of 2008, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, um, a pituitary macroadenoma, it's called. And on January 4th, 2010, I went to shake my husband to wake him up for work. I shook him and I shook him, and he wouldn't wake up. I had five children, five young children at the time. And because of the brain tumor, I was too sick to work. Um, but I knew, and he was the primary breadwinner at the house, I knew that I had to do something for my children. I, I went to um, the community college and I started taking classes. And Phi Theta Kappa contacted me. They said, we want you to be um, in Phi Theta Kappa. And through the Phi Theta Kappa program at my community college, I got an email from Harvard Extension School saying, we know you can do the work and we want you at our school. Oh my word. <laughs> I was super excited. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, more than I could even ask or think, you know, because I used to, when I lived in Boston before I moved to North Carolina, I used to drive the number one bus. Sometimes I had to sit at the the bus stop and wait until it was my time to do the return trip and I would just look upon Harvard Square and I would just see you know they just look everybody just looks so studious everybody just <laughs> looks so smart or whatever but you know I was the bus driver so you know all I could do was sit and dream and I never imagined that I would be a student walking through those gates myself mm -hmm. Yes. And eventually a graduate. And eventually a graduate. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We're so proud of the access mission and the fact that we open the gates up to, to students with a variety of backgrounds. So we're yes. thrilled that you're here, that, that you're an alum, and we'll hear more about your journey in, in just a minute. That's, that's just incredible. Dinesh, I understand that you came to the States for university after living overseas, and you've had quite an interesting path to Cambridge yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in Hong Kong. I'm although an Indian, but I'm very integrated into the Chinese community. I speak the language, Cantonese, and I was there for 18 years mm -hmm. before coming over to the States and then did my bachelor's degree at Brown, did computer science, and then started my journey with IBM um, in computer science uh, work. After a very short period of time, I decided that I want to venture into my own startup. So I was doing my own thing. And then the past about 10 years, I was mainly in the transportation automotive industry. And I keep hearing the word sustainability, sustainability, we need to be more sustainable. And when I ask around, no one understands what that means. It just seems like a cool word. And I say, I need to know about it. And where should I go to know about it? Like go back to school. So I was looking at different programs and then um, I found this program at Harvard and this, wow, it's not only just about sustainability, it leads you to various aspects about 
sustainability, how do you calculate emissions, the extreme exposure to the instructors. I talked to different people who graduated from the class, and I was like, I want to come in and, and do this program. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was um, very exciting. i um, happy to share more about the journey once I got in, but coming here, going through that process, meeting with peers, working very closely with the instructors, with the professors. I think I'm an expert now, I would say that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and bringing what I'm learning into the industry. That's terrific. Yeah. One of the things that really characterizes both our students and our graduates in general is the fact that there is no common pathway. Everyone's journey looks different and everyone creates their own educational pathway through our system. The both of you have had very distinct yet very separate tracks through Harvard and have achieved success in very different ways and very unique ways. And yet it seems like the common denominator in both of your journeys that is that there were very deliberate decisions on both of your half, both of your behalfs on how you wanted to do it and how you were going to create that pathway. Dinesh, let me just start with you and ask you. We know that you've changed careers, transitioning from computer science to now, as you said, sustainability. What motivated you to make that change, and how are you so sure that it was the right decision for you at the time? Yeah, so when I was in the industry, um, when people started talking about sustainability, I wanted to learn more than just sustainable transportation or environment. People just assume sustainability is just about your environment. So I, when I was looking at different programs from different schools, there were various programs from different schools offering sustainability, but they were very focused on either environmental science or sustainable financing. I wanted something broad, but at the same time, it allows me to get in depth on a particular subject. So when I was looking at the uh, Harvard Extension Sustainability Program, I found that there was three things that I really like. One was it allows us to choose, like you said, the path, right? What do you want to focus in? There's numerous courses. You can be very focused on, let's say, forestry or marine, or you can be very focused on carbon emissions, or you can do a thesis or capstone based on what your interest is. So that was, wow, I can design my own curriculum almost like. Secondly was the um, idea that you can get access to the instructors and when I look at the instructors, I was like, wow, many of them are actually graduates from Harvard. So it's not just instructors from just the other workplaces or, or from anywhere. And while we get, because I want to learn from the leaders, right? Learning things that I can really bring back to the industry. So those are the two things. And then the third was, of course, the Harvard background, the Harvard support. And that, to me, was even more amazing when I was in the program, the peers, people coming from, UN, people coming from different industries, and I get to mingle with them, we get to do projects together. So going back to the career change, I think the career change is both before and within the program that allows me to believe that this is real. This is something that I want to do, and I get a huge support right now, support from the school and support from the peers. Absolutely. I just think that the community that we have around learning here at the Extension School, as you said, is really just phenomenal because there's so many people with different ideas that bring different perspectives to the table. I recently met a student who um, worked for Amazon in developing sustainable delivery systems, so really trying to yeah. solve the problem of how do we deliver all these packages to huge skyscrapers in New York. Who's very interested and probably will enroll in the sustainability program to really further some of their thinking about how they how they do that. So thank you, Shirley. I want to get back to something that you said. You know, you described in your journey how um, you progressed through community college, did really well with close to a 4.0, and then had the opportunity because Harvard knocked on the door and said, "By the way, you know, have you considered the extension school?" How did you know that Harvard was the right path for you and how did you ultimately say yes this is where I want to be I knew right away I knew right away just from um, being from Massachusetts um, just from um, you know seeing the students um, just knowing about the um, 
the education at Harvard that, you know, Harvard is Ivy League or Harvard is the best. And I wanted to, what I wanted to do, I wanted to be the best. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. And you have absolutely achieved that. And I think that's something that really characterizes our student, no matter what program they're in or where they're from or where they're going, is this just this desire to be the best at the best. Yes. And that just that drive and determination that clearly you both have is really, really incredible for um, for the program and for yourself to get you through. As, as we were talking earlier, you know, it's not all easy, right? There's there's some there's some challenges along the way and, and, and ways that sometimes you need some support from the community. So having that quest for excellence as a common theme through our students is really, really important and really impactful. So yeah. let me just tease out one more element of that, and that's the concept of being intellectually curious, which is so something that certainly unites most of our students in the quest for their programs. I find it so fascinating that whatever stage of life our learners are in, there's a deep need to know more. Know more about sustainability, know more about religion, know more about how to advance your profession and, and what you're doing. Um, and this concept of expanding your horizons and skill sets, whether you're someone who's mid-career, who needs to take it a level up, or someone making a switch to an entire entirely new industry. Shirley, what made you want to go beyond just graduating from community college? And how did you know, so even when you had the opportunity to come to Harvard, that you wanted to pursue uh, the ALB program and really graduate um, with, with honors from a place like the Extension School? Because of my illness. Because of my illness and um, who I was as a chaplain, I've had, um, like I've, I've said before, I've had five brain surgeries. When I go as a, as a chaplain, when I go into the hospital to pray for people, to give them hope, you know, I want to tell them, you know, it's possible. You know, with God, anything is possible. It's mm -hmm. possible. So when I go into a hospital room to pray for someone and they say, but you don't understand, chaplain. Chaplain Tate, you don't understand. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, my grandfather has a brain tumor. It's possible. Right. You know. You don't understand, you know, it has this disease. It's, it's possible. It right. can be done. You call me in for prayer. Prayer is possible, but the powers that be, you know, um, tell me, you know, you need a degree to, to, to go in and do the things that, that, that you're doing or whatever. So that's why I wanted to. That's an incredible, to do it. incredible story. And I often, you know, it, and it leads me to think that, I'm often struck by, especially given the modality of, of learning at the Extension School, a lot of it is online. It's not just you that's consuming this education. You might be, you know, both of you at home. You're, you know, I met your daughter today, Dinesh, she's, she's adorable. You mentioned you have, you have a number of kids. How is the effect of your education shown through on your family? Because I think it just, it models that things are possible. And I'd love to hear, Dinesh, how you found your education affecting your, your family and your friends. No, definitely. Um, actually, before Harvard, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a big learner. I love to learn things. I'm not afraid to learn things. So before Harvard, um, I started to learn a martial arts called Kendo. It's like a Japanese sword martial arts. Basically, George Lucas brought the team to San Francisco to learn the act of Kendo, which became the lightsaber duo in Star Wars. I'm not trying to be the la last Jedi, but <laughs> I wanted to learn about that. So um, I started about eight years ago. It was tough, especially at my age. I'm not like in the te teens or 20s. It was really tough. I was smacked at, I was hit. You are asked to make split decision in, in in seconds and I started learning and learning and, and trying to figure out the moves. I was very uh, honored and lucky and very happy that I got very good instructor taught me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to the point is you really need great instructors, great teachers who can support you. So um, right now I'm in the considered as a black belt level. So mm -hmm. I do fight. Um, so. Not that I will fight in any of these events that is coming up, but <laughs> I can fight, let's put it this way. But um, 
I think that progress, and then my daughter came into our lives. She'd see me practicing and practicing. And then when I start taking the Harvard class online, she always asked, what are you doing? I said, these are my teachers. Mm -hmm. She say, but you, you still need teachers. I said, of course I need teachers. These are my teachers. I'm learning from it. I teach her the word sustainability. She started telling her classmates, my dad is doing sustainability. Um, you know, teachers were fascinated of this big word, sustainability. I don't think she still understands what that is. Mm -hmm. But, but with, with that being said, I think um, the influence that I, I brought in is you can learn. You can learn at different stages. Um, you can learn different things. It's never the worst time. There's never the best time. There's never like the right time to learn. You just go and do it, right? Uh, it will never be a smooth uh, process. Mm -hmm. um, it will always be certain path that you might need support. And I think that's where the importance is, is to find your support. In the extension school, I was very lucky that I have a great support from my classmates, from the instructors, from the administrative team. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I hope I can contribute even beyond graduation back to the community. That's great. Well, we're going to hold you to that yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> and and uh, so let me ask you this. You're both an inspiration to our community. You know, we've, we've talked about that. What inspires you? Shirley, what inspires you? Knowing, actually knowing that my children and my grandchildren are looking at me and mm -hmm. I want to leave a legacy for them. Mm -hmm. that, that really inspires me. Excellent. Yes. Dinesh, what about you? What inspires you? I think I come from a family that's not afraid to do things. Uh, even when people say this might not be the right thing to do or this is the not the normal way of doing things. So I'm never afraid of doing things that's different. That's why I'm in the startup industry, uh, yeah. startup world. Um, I think the inspiration comes from um, both my dad and then now my, my wife and my daughter is to really be someone that I'm there to support, I'm there to give myself to the community, to the families, um, and give and take, right? I will take from them, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I will give whatever I can give to them. I think coming back to the ultimate aim is, I want to be someone that I can contribute, um, be supportive, whether to my families, to friends, to the community, someone that they can say that, hey, if we need help, let's call Dinesh. I might not be able to help everything, but I hope I will be someone that they will think about. Great, great, and and you know the Extension School is such a rich network. I'm sure that you'll you'll be getting yeah, calls nice. from from people, especially after this interview. Okay, so if you could both share with me, who was your favorite faculty member and why? Oh, Sarah Ann Stinnett held my hand through this whole process, and I I really um. She is a asset to Harvard. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Dinesh. Yeah, so coming to sustainability, I was trying to understand what sustainability is about. And then I took uh, the course 102 Renewable Energy. And Dr. Ramon Sanchez was the instructor. Um, and his background on renewable energy, health impact. I was like, I need to know more from him. So I chased him up and said that, I'm doing my thesis, be my thesis advisor. And when he said yes, I was like, wow, I'm so excited about that. That's yeah. great. You know, one of the hallmarks of our program certainly is the fact that we have the scholar practitioner model where our faculty members, not only are they academic qualified and at the high, academically qualified at the highest point in their profession, but they're also industry leaders in a practical application of the knowledge. So I'm glad you got to experience that firsthand. So tell me, is there a defining moment or a favorite moment that has, has occurred for you at the Extension School? The defining moment was actually convocation. My convocation when I just got the letter saying that I was accepted and I was able to, you know, come together with everybody that it was, it was just amazing just to be part of the community. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Tanesh. For me was, um, so I took a few classes, 116 about uh, carbon emissions, calculating carbon emissions, and then as I said, the 102 and others about uh, bring 
how the health impacts from emissions. And I thought, why don't I bring what I learned into the industry? So I entered a competition, the Porsche Data Competition, which is organized by the automotive in, uh, car manufacturer of Porsche. And basically I developed an application based on what I learned here. And it was a North America competition and my company won. And we won the competition. It was on the news and now they want to work with us to build that into every single car given to every single owners of Porsche. And basically, it's everything that I learned here, I brought it into the application. That's incredible. It's incredible. What about, is there a project, one project, and Dinesh, maybe that's yours, yeah. that was your favorite during your time here? Yeah, I'm very excited about the thesis that I'm working on with uh, Dr. Sanchez. Uh, it's about vehicle technology as well as renewable energy, and we are doing about the most populated cities in Japan, because Japan is one of the leading car manufacturers in the world. So we are looking at how different cities will have health impact based on electrifications of vehicles and renewable energies, and looking at which of the top 10 cities they should think about. For me, what was exciting about it is I'm the one doing all this uh, data work and looking at it, and the results was fascinating. And I'm very excited, I hope I will one day share with, with the communities and even to, to cities in Japan. That's what I'm excited about. That sounds terrific. I, I can't wait to see it because that's going to be very impactful, I'm sure. Yes. Shirley, what about you? I was in a class called Death and Dying, Death and, Dying and I did a, um, a project on dementia. The project was very um, dear to me because my father, um, he lived with me at the time and he had dementia. The project helped me learn more about his disease. It helped me to um, help myself and it helped me to help him. So very practical applications for both of you, Big Ed, in different ways. Absolutely. Yes, okay. So one word that describes the Extension School. For me, it's fun. <laughs> it's lots of fun. It's fun meeting with different peers from different backgrounds. It's fun to do projects together with people from every different parts of the world. It's fun to interact with leaders of the industry. Um, and it's fun to be in a community like this. So it's fun. Great. One word, excellence. OK. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Last question. If you were to give one piece of advice to someone who is considering starting the journey or just starting the journey, what would that be? And let me start with you, Dinesh. Fear. Don't be afraid. Really, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's fun to be back to school. It's fun to learn things. And for those who are in the program, you're still deciding what courses to do, just go out and try and talk to different people. For someone who is thinking about the program, don't be afraid. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Thank you. Shirley. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You reap what you sow. A lot of people take that as a negative connotation. Oh, you did something, you're going to reap that. But it, it doesn't mean that. It means the good things. And the most important person you can sow into is yourself. You're gonna, you're gonna reap the benefits. And, and you, the benefits are not just gonna affect you, they're gonna affect you know, your lineage, your children and your, and your grandchildren. Never give up on yourself. You can do this. That's great, yes. thank you. It's just belief in yourself and don't be afraid. Two really yes. important words of advice that I would heartily endorse. So thank you so much. Thank you to the both of you for spending time with me today and sharing with our, with our viewers your, your journey. Um, you, you are both incredible, incredible represent, re representatives of our program, and we're so thrilled to have you in our community. So it's an absolute thank you again. honor to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you.